Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting butterfly and flowers, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Merlot. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, green oxide, Mars black, fire red, burnt umber which I'll call brown and deep yellow and of course you could certainly switch up those colors but that's what I'm going to be using today. For my tools I'm going to be using a standard number two pencil and I've got three brushes here today. I have a half inch wide bristle brush, a number 10 round brush, and a number three round brush and I'll refer to them as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up if you'd like. You're going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video I'm going to be providing you with a couple of additional resources for you during the painting process. Um, one of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using with the same size canvas, the same paints and brushes and all that good stuff, even an easel is in included. Um, and then there's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as a visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so for the first step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna outline our butterfly wings. We're gonna be using our pencil, and how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna give you a couple of marks to make, and then we'll just connect those marks, and hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have something that resembles a couple of butterfly wings. <laughs> so what I'm gonna have you do first is we're just gonna be using our pencil. You can make a dot in the center of your canvas. So what I usually do is kind of eyeball where the center point is from left to right, and then eyeball where the center point is from top to bottom, and then just make myself a mark. And then the next mark that I'm gonna make is about halfway, if I was to make a diagonal line from the center to this corner right here, with you know an imaginary line, I'm gonna make a dot about halfway between those two markers. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up diagonal, maybe about an inch or two, up and through here, make myself a third mark, and then I'm gonna go over to the right over here and make myself another mark, maybe about two and a half inches. I don't wanna go past here. This is gonna be kind of my guide to make this main butterfly wing. So how I'm gonna connect these dots is I'm gonna be going up a little bit, then I'm gonna come sloping down. I wanna keep this almost in a curve kind of manner the whole time. I don't want any sharp lines, but if when you get down in through here, if you start to wiggle it a little bit, that's totally fine. If your line becomes wobbly, that's totally fine. Um, so I'm gonna come up a little bit, I'll connect it to here, and then I'll keep it in kind of a curvature around here, hitting these points, and then I'm gonna come back up to here, instill a little bit of a curve. So here we go, I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna go up a little bit in through here, and then I'm gonna start to curve it, and come down and meet this one in through here, and this is where I'm gonna make a sharp kind of curve this way, and then I'm gonna continue on in through here and then up in through here. And you can see I'm using like a light sketching kind of um, movement with my pencil. It doesn't have to be a firm line. You can certainly tweak it as you go along. And then what I'm gonna do is from this marker right in through here, we'll consider this to be the corner of the wing, I'm gonna come just below it, make myself another marker, and then I'm gonna come down maybe about an inch and a half, make myself another marker, and then I'm gonna come over to the right from here, just travel, 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 until you're maybe about an inch and a half 
away from the edge of the can canvas, make yourself a mark, and then you're gonna connect these with a little bit of a curved line in through there, curve your corner in through here, and then make it hit this one up here. This one is almost a straight line. You can curve it a little bit, but almost a straight line. Then I'm gonna make another mark about a half of an inch away from here, so maybe somewhere about here. And then I'm gonna make myself another mark Probably, I would say, come down about maybe an inch and a half. You definitely want it farther than here and in a little bit, something like this. And this is going to be a big swooping um, outer. It's the other, it's the wing that mimics this one, but on the other side of the, um, of the butterfly. And I'm going to connect it right about here, but I don't want it to be a, a jutting out piece. I want it to look really natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right about here and I'm gonna come down in a similar angle to the first wing and I'm gonna come over here like this. I'm gonna kind of shoot past here a little bit and then I'm gonna get it to connect with here with a curved curved line. So I shot past those two just so I knew how far down to go and where to stop in through here. And you want it, you know, kind of a similar curve as this, but it doesn't have to be exact because it can be at a, a different angle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm, it looks kind of funny right now. <laughs> it doesn't look like a butterfly at all right now. <laughs> so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up about a third of the way up this whole area. So if I take this and say, maybe this is a third and this is a third, that's about where I'm gonna come up to here and make myself a mark. And then I'm coming way up towards this upper left-hand corner of my canvas. I'm gonna come in about maybe the same distance I came in for this one, so maybe about an inch and a half, and I'm down maybe, let's come down about four inches and make yourself a mark. So this is gonna be kind of the equivalent of this corner on this big, um, on the wings on this side. I'm gonna connect this to here and this to here. And for the top one, I'm gonna curve it a little bit and then it comes pretty sloping, pre not necessarily straight, there's a little bit of a curve, but you don't wanna bring it way out over here. So here I go, I'm gonna take it from here, I'm gonna go up a little bit, and then I'm just gonna kind of curve it. I want it to continue to have a curve the whole time, but it can be a slight curve, and then I kind of meet it right in through there. So now that I've got that, now I'm gonna make sure I have a little bit of a curve on this corner, and then I'm gonna bring this down in a kind of a diagonal mark, and then I do want a little curve coming out here, so you can kind of pull this out and something like that. And again, yours might end up a little bit different shape than mine, obviously, because we're just freeforming this, but, and you can bend it, twist it, and we'll do some, you know, maybe some adjustments later, but that's going to be the outline for our wings. We're gonna use our big brush for the next step so you can get that out and ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our background, so everything except for your butterfly, all black. So I'm using my big brush, and I'm just gonna be using black paint. Don't worry if it doesn't come out perfect because we're gonna be doing a whole nother layer on top of the, um, the black background. This is just, in essence, kind of giving us a, um, like a nice base for our, I don't know, jungly kind of foliage area that we're gonna be putting in later. And you don't have to worry about going, you know, having it perfectly up to the edge of your butterfly, but definitely get it nice and close and try and get some good coverage around the edges, bring it all the way up to your pencil mark and you're gonna notice your butterfly will get reshapen a little bit in this step. Um, but when we go to paint the actual butterfly itself, you can certainly make any kind of little modifications that you want. And I use this big brush through this um, kind of block-in type stage, but if you wanted to use a smaller brush around the edges of the butterfly, feel free to do so. Um, but I know we're gonna be doing so many more details that even if I bump into my, my butterfly a little bit, it's totally okay. So again, I'm just using my big brush. I'm using black paint only. I just kind of got some little 
eraser shavings on my brush, but that's okay. Adds texture to my painting. Um, and you don't have to use any particular brush stroke because again, we're gonna be going over this entire, you know, the whole thing again. So this is just meant to give you some kind of stable, dark um, background. So everything else that we put on top of it is gonna, is gonna pop and, and really look super cool. So you can use a lot of paint or a little bit of paint, whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And I'm just gonna kind of keep plugging away while I do this. I'm really excited to do this butterfly too. They're so pretty and they, so these we're doing what's called a tree, or yeah, a tree nymph, right? Yeah, not, not, there's a couple of different kinds of nymphs and this one's the tree nymph. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, they've got like these paper wings to them and they're, they're huge. They live like in the jungle type area, um, but I guess they can, get to be like nine <laughs> inches or something they can really become these are really large butterflies and they i guess they're not scared of people either so i've never seen one in person but i i've seen many pictures of them and i think that they're very beautiful butterflies so i'm just kind of finishing this up here and again i'm just using black i do like to paint the edges of my canvas as well so um if you want to as you go along you can just paint those edges um you can paint it with any color, but since we're using black as the background, that would be a great like border color to use if you wanted to. And once we get done doing this step, we are gonna switch brushes to our medium brush. So once you've got this background on, which I almost do, um, you can put this large brush away in your water cup and you can get ready for the next step. Here we go, just a couple more brush strokes in through here. And I like my paint to be kind of um, even, so when I do get done painting a big area like this, I tend to just kind of go back and forth, make sure I've painted out any really thick spots, and then I'm gonna get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're gonna be painting the base coat for our butterfly wings. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors I'm using are brown, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is now, so I, you probably have guessed that this, these two wings are on the outside, they're the closest to us, and these two wings are on the other side. So the butterfly's kind of like tilted as it's going in towards this flower. Um, so I'm gonna have these two a little bit darker than these two. Um, and how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna, on each wing, I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown and then I'm not gonna wash my brush, then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and then I'm gonna go to white and I'm gonna do like a gradient where it's a little bit darker at the inside or in this area and works its way to being lighter towards the edges of the wings. So. By doing these two, I'm gonna do these two first, and they're gonna just naturally be a little bit darker because we're starting the gradient so much further um, closer to the edge than we are here. So just so you understand how why I'm doing it in this fashion and can understand why these two are gonna end up darker and it's okay. So I'm gonna start with just a teeny tiny bit of brown paint on my brush. And I'm gonna do this one first, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of brown paint right up to the edge of that um, wing. Oh, I wanted to tell you before I start, <laughs> even though I already started, um, let me just wash my brush. Hold on, I wanted to tell you something. Make sure your canvas is dry before you do this step, because if you bump into some wet black paint around the edges, you might pull it into the butterfly. It might make a little bit of a mess. So just dry it. You could take a sip and relax for a minute, or take a blow dryer and just blow dry it. All right, so now I'm gonna paint again. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of brown paint. I'm gonna put it right on the edge, right next to that wing. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel, but not wash it. Pick up a tiny bit of yellow paint and get these two to blend in with each other a little bit. And then I'm gonna work this yellow out further into the um, butterfly wing, I'm gonna wipe my brush off of my paper towel and pick up a little bit of white. And so what's gonna happen now is the white's gonna to help to get these 
three colors to kind of blend at this spot. And you can go back and just kind of rework it a little bit. It's easier to blend it when it's still wet. So you can just kind of keep working at it until you get it blended as much as you want. And if you put too much paint, what you can do is just kind of wait for it to dry and do another coat on it. And now I'm just picking up white paint and it's gonna get lighter and lighter as I go towards the edges. And if you need to back yourself into the previous section, feel free to do so. And I'm going right up to the edges of the, I keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel because I wanna make sure it gets lighter and lighter as it comes towards this little tip here. And I'm gonna go right around the edge. And if you don't have perfect edges um, yet, don't worry about it. We still have lots of design to go on these wings. Take your time, go slow. The less paint you use, the easier it's gonna to be to control this, this little gradient that you're creating. Um, and if you have to, you can do a couple of different layers on it, whatever you need to do to get it to look um, as pretty as you want it to look. And now I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I know I don't have a lot of paint on there. Repeat the step on the next one. So I've got a little bit of brown on my brush and I'm just getting it nice and close. And I know that my pencil is, is working its way into my paint, which I'm okay with. Um, that provides me with a nice, almost shadowy kind of area. I wanna make sure I get this little bit of darkness up and through here so you'll be able to see the difference between the two wings and get it nice and down in through here. And now I've got, I picked up that little bit of yellow and now I'm gonna start picking up white without washing my brush. And this is going to fade itself into a nice lighter color at the edge of that wing and you could have it a little bit darker if you wanted to if you wanted this to really read as maybe almost a shadowed um like this particular wing is being shadowed by the other one you could certainly go a little bit darker with your brown and your yellow you could at any time just add both of those colors back to your brush and add just a tiny bit more if you don't feel that it's dark enough well you can add it later or leave it as is, whatever works for you visually. But again, I keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel so I can control that gradient. And once I, you can see it takes me a minute just to get it the way that I want it to. Once I've got it as blended as I want, I'm just gonna move right on to the next wing. So I like to work my way from um, things that are further away from me to things that are closer to me. So these two were the furthest. Now I'm gonna work on this one and I'll work on the top one last. So I'm gonna work on this one next, just wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a little bit of brown. So I've got a little bit of brown going in this closest area to um, where the body is gonna be. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow, get this to blend in with that brown. and. From what I've seen on these um, butterflies, this color can kind of travel up this top wing a little bit. So I've got a little bit more yellow on my brush just to kind of get that yellow to be represented. Now I'm picking up white paint and I'm gonna get this wing to be nice and light as it's moving towards this edge here. I know I still want to have some difference between these two, so I don't want it too, too white in through here. So I just add a little bit more yellow and white to my brush just to make sure I still have a tinge of something in through here. And now I'm going to really start to use a lot of white as I go towards the end of that um, wing. And then we just have a one more wing left after we get this edge going. I slow down around the edges so I can make sure I have a nice clean edge over here. But again, if I don't get it perfect, I'm okay with that because I know we've got a whole bunch of other details that we're gonna be doing on it. And then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel to go and start that last wing. And you can see I can go right back into a previous section if I need to or want to. Now I'm picking up a tiny bit of my brown. Gonna start this little area in through here. Just a teeny bit of brown. 
And then once I've got that area started, I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a teeny bit of yellow, get these two to blend in together, and then I'll start picking up that white. And you can see I'm going all the way to my pencil marks, making sure I've got this nice and kind of blended in. And it might take you a little while just to get the, the motion going where you can get them to blend as they're drying, but once you've got it, it's, it's, it's a pretty fun process. And again, if you don't get it right off the bat, don't worry about it, you can keep kind of practicing with it. You can keep doing layer upon layer until you get this gradient the way that you want. Um, it is the easiest though. If, if you do something that you don't, that you're not totally, you know, it's not as appealing as you thought it would be, just let it dry for a minute. That's the easiest way to make corrections. Um, if, if you have a lot of paint on your brush and you just try and muscle through it and keep painting and painting and painting, what's gonna happen is you're just gonna blend it all in together and it'll be one solid color. So the easiest way to go about it is just kind of, you know, take a breather, maybe work on one of the other wings and just wait for that particular wing to dry and then you can come back into it and work on it as much as you want. I think I want this to just travel a little bit further in through here. And if you want your butterfly to be a different kind of butterfly, just have fun doing this. It doesn't have to be this specific type of butterfly. And then we are gonna switch brushes to our big brush for the next step. So once you've got this base coat on your butterfly wings, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing our second layer of the background. So I'm gonna be using my big brush and when we're painting this, I want you to just think of out of focus. This is like, if you were to take a photograph of the butterfly, the butterfly is gonna be the only thing in focus except for maybe a little batch of flowers right next to it. Everything else is gonna be out of focus. So the things that are in the background are more red flowers, there's leaves in the background, there might be trees in the background. So I'm gonna be using this black base and I might use more black on my brush but the other colors I'm gonna be using are red, green, brown, yellow, and black. So I'm using all my colors except for white on this, step, on this step. And how I'm gonna start it is I'm gonna put a first layer of where I feel that I want these little bunches of flowers to be, the in focus and the out of focus. So I put red paint on my brush. Now I know that when this red paint dries or when all of this paint dries because it's got black as a background, it's gonna get darker and darker as it dries. So I'm not gonna be too alarmed when I first put it on there if it's really bright because it's gonna get darker when it dries and I can also always dull it down later too. So I know that I want a big bunch right here where my, um, where my butterfly is gonna be landing. So I'm gonna put some red paint in through here and I want soft edges to it. So as I'm putting this on here, I'm gonna almost fade it out into the background. And you can dot it, you can swirl it, you can kind of have fun with how how you want it, um, but I'm not doing too large of an area because I'm gonna have another bunch of these down here. This type of flower um, grows in these little clusters, but there can be small clusters and big clusters. So if you have little areas and big areas, that works too. I might put a couple of, oops, need more paint on my brush. A couple of little areas down in through here. Maybe a, maybe a little bigger area there. I'm gonna have a big area over here. So again, I'm not really concerned about the quantity of paint on my brush, but if you feel like you've got a ton or too much paint, you just wipe it off on your, on your paper towel. And again, I'm just kind of getting my red areas in to start. I think I'm gonna have maybe a little spot up in through here. Maybe I'll use less paint on my brush or rub it out more so it almost fades into that background a little bit more. And again, I know it's gonna get darker as it dries, so I'm not terribly concerned um, if it's a little bit bright right now. Maybe I've got a couple little spots here. Maybe I've got a little spot over here, right alongside my, my beautiful butterfly. And then once I've got enough of these red spots, maybe, hmm, 
I like, I know what's going to happen with this red when it dries, so I'm, I get excited when I get first get it on there. Um, so I think maybe I'll have a little spot back here. So now that I've got the red area on there, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to wipe it on my paper towel. When I'm doing these kind of like subtle out of focus things, I know that nature's colors kind of overlap each other and work together so I didn't wash my brush I'm just gonna pick up green and I know that green and red makes brown so that's a pretty safe color to start with and I'm just gonna kinda of wipe my brush off on my paper towel just so I don't have too too much and I'm gonna do the same thing with some green areas so I can have more of them I can have less of them whatever visually works for you is totally fine you'll work that red off of the brush I feel like I'm gonna sneeze so if I do I'm so sorry if you see my nose twitching that's what's happening right now um, I'm adding a little bit more green in through here maybe I'll have a little bit lighter of an area over here maybe I'm gonna have some of the leaves popping out over here and again if you have too much red on your brush still you might want to wash it and dry it but I don't have too much on my brush so I'm just kind of adding some really neat green spots in here and again you can rub it or you can flick it um, this is really as it dries going to translate as just out of focus um, maybe I'll put a little bit over in through here and whenever you feel like you've got too much paint just wipe it off on your paper towel maybe I've got a little bit in through here so my goal on this step is to do a second coat on the entire background so even where you have black areas and you even if you still want them to be black that's totally fine add more black to your brush so I just picked up a little bit of brown maybe I'm gonna do some browner areas in a minute I think I'm gonna pick up some yellow as well and then I'll probably finish it off with um, maybe a little bit of black just to fill in the gaps but I'm just kind of going with it making sure it looks out of focus to me which it definitely does um, but and as this red is drying, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but it's definitely getting darker and darker as it dries. I know that there's going to be some cool leaves in between these flowers. This is going to be more my in-focus area. I'm going to add a tiny bit of yellow to my brush right now, just because I know that, again, this is going to be kind of my focal area. So maybe I add the illusion of some leaf petals right now. These type of um, flowers, they have... They have big leaves, um, which is pretty cool. So if you want to add just those little lighter spots in through here with a tiny bit of yellow, that's great. Again, we'll be doing another step, which is going to enhance all of this later. Um, but now that I've got pretty much everything, I've got some light spots and some dark spots. I've got my red where I want it to go. I'm just going to touch my brush in black. Make sure I've covered, like I don't have any um, areas that have not been hit a second time with paint. I've got a little bit of a glare on my canvas right now. That's why I'm kind of putting my head um, in an awkward position, but I want to just make sure that I've got all of these areas covered. And then once you've got the entire background hit with a second coat of paint, what we're going to be doing after I get my head fully in the canvas <laughs> or in the video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be switching brushes to our small brush so you've got the second coat done you can put your large brush away in your water cup take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are making the black markings on the butterfly wings so I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to be using just black paint um, and a couple of tips for you, because we're going to want to make small, skinny, long lines, um, is you can take your brush and add a tiny bit of water into your paint, into the black paint. So you make it almost like an ink consistency. And then once you have it, the consistency you want, you don't want it too runny, just like ink. Um, once you've got it to that consistency, you can take your brush and spin it on the side of your palette and that makes it nice and pointy every time. And then my third tip for you is don't push hard <laughs> when you're painting. Um, and if you do and if you make your lines too wide, don't worry about it. You can always correct it later. So what I'm going to do is I am going to work on this big one first because that kind of gives you the construction of the wing um, 
there is kind of like a center area that these veiny things come out of. So I'm gonna, this is where our body is gonna go later. And if you can keep it in your head that all the main veiny parts kind of start here, that will help you to kind of build it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from here and then I'm gonna make myself kind of one, it doesn't even have to be super straight. I don't like to do straight lines on these because when I look at every butterfly, they're not perfectly straight lines. They're just kind of veiny and chaotic. So, but they do have some se semblance of order to it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down just a little bit more and you can almost make like um, sketchy lines as opposed to a really firm line. So once I've made this one, I'm gonna come about to the same distance and then I'm gonna almost make myself like these little um, curvy kind of lines to connect these two something like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these little points to the edges of my wing with like a curved line. So I'm going to come in from here and again just sketchy kind of lines. So I've got this and then I'm going to kind of come it with a curve like this. I'm going to come with a curve and I'm just kind of giving myself like a road map for the rest of the lines. So I've got this, it's gonna come down to the edge. Then I'm gonna come to this one. And then I do the same for these two. And you can see I'm just kind of wisping this, uh, wisping my lines. I don't necessarily need a firm line. And now that I've kind of got that roadmap, now um, I've got to kind of fill in these gaps so they're still kind of coming off of the center, so but they don't have to start right here. So maybe you've got this one starting in through here. Maybe there's kind of a broken one in through there. Maybe this one kind of shoots off of that one. Maybe there's one that shoots off in through here. And that's my starting point. Now what I've got is I want to give a couple of veins in the center area here so I can kind of think of it like a, almost like a tree something like that with a couple of branches coming off of it now I've got that now around the edge of the exterior of the wing not in through here but around this area there's almost on this type of um, butterfly there's almost like these bumps um, that have white they're black and then they have white dots in them so I'm not gonna do it consistently every one-to-one. -one. I'm almost gonna do it in a messy, chaotic fashion. I'm gonna start right about here, and I'm just gonna kind of make myself some bumps that are, again, they don't have to line up with those veins. Maybe some are taller than others. Maybe some come way far into that particular marking. And I'm gonna stop a little bit past this area um, where the, it intersects with the other wing. And then once I've got that, I'm gonna color it in, color them in black, but I wanna leave um, a little bit of an edge of white in this area here so I can see the difference between the black versus the background. So just in this one little area, and we're gonna do it on the other wings as well, but this is the only area you really need to do it on this one, and maybe this little area here too. Um, so I'm kind of just outlining the edge, leaving a little bit of a white area there. And then once I've got this in, and you, again, you could wiggle the edges if you wanted to. If you wanted like a little bumpy edge to your um, wing, you could do that too. And then I'm just going to color this in with black. So I did the, the top bumps. I outlined the bottom edge of the um, wing. And now I'm just coloring in these black sections. We're gonna put white dots um, in these later. So know that there's another step coming to that little area. And then once I have this little section of this wing done, I have a couple more little marks I wanna make on this wing. And then the other wings are easier because they're only partial wings. This is the whole shebang on this one. So I'm gonna make some more um, black marks and these are gonna be somewhere in through here and they're gonna be really messy marks. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna kind of just wiggle it. 
they don't have to mimic one another. They are, um, I, I don't, I don't know um, the exact reason for this, but I know that every um, butterfly has its own style of markings and this particular one, this is how their markings go. So I'm just following the photographs that I saw and I'm just gonna make them going down here. I'm not gonna do this little section in through here, but what I do wanna do is make a, an outline. I wanna outline this wing here with black just so we have a good separation. So I've taken a little bit more black on my brush and I'm gonna give this a nice little outline in through here. And then we might make a couple more little veins before we move on to the next one. Uh, I do want an outline over here. And again, you can leave a little bit of an edge if you think that you're not gonna be able to see the edge of that wing on that background leave a little bit of an edge there and then hmm do I want any more veins in through here oh maybe I want a little little spot in through here and then maybe a couple of little veins in through here just fill it in whatever way you feel looks natural if you feel like it needs another vein feel free to do so and then I'm going to work my way I'll do these two because they're nice and close to me so these again we're we need this formation at the bottom and there's not much room to go so really I'm just going to kind of make myself some bumps at the edge of here I'm going to go maybe halfway from here to here start about here and then I'll leave a little bit of a space over here and then just make myself some you know chaotic little bumps going along here and they can be any size you want I'm going to outline the edge but keep a tiny sliver so you can see the edge of that wing next to that really black background. And it doesn't have to be a huge sliver and it doesn't even have to be a consistent sliver, just something that will tell the viewer that this in fact is the edge of the, of the wing. And then I'm just gonna color these in with black. And then my veins don't need to be as fancy as they were on that one because you're only seeing little hints of them because we're just having a little portion of the, of the wing but I do know that they're coming from here so if I imagine what it would look like coming from there I can do something like this like this like that and then maybe I've got some of these messier dots in through here and then I'll move on to my next one which is this one and this is going to be just this little bottom edge is going to have uh, the bumps so I'm gonna start over here and I don't want them to overtake it so I don't want them to be too, too tall but I definitely want them to have representation here. So I've got like that, I'm going to, oh, I wanna out, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm, moving, I'm moving on to this one by accident. I forgot to do my little black outline. Sometimes I just notice things on the fly and it's like, oh, I gotta go do that right now. So I'm just putting that little outline there. Um, all right, back to this one. I want to put my little outline all along the wing and where I need to um, if that background is really black just make sure you leave that little sliver of the wing showing uh, the light part of the wing I'm gonna do it over here so I don't forget like I did on the last one and again I'm just using these little wispy sketch kind of lines I'm not pushing hard just so I can get this going and again, my veins are coming from here. So this is kind of a tricky one because they got to come over from here and come out from, from that spot. So I'm going to just reload my brush here and I'm going to come from here. And then nat the natural progression leads me to these dots or to these markings at the bottom of the wings. So that's where I want those veins to travel to. So I've got them traveling to those dots and then maybe I've got a couple of little rogue ones over on the side and then maybe I've got those little the essence of those messy ones in that second tier all right and now I've got my last one to do so I'm gonna sorry I'm just inking putting a little bit of water in my black paint I seem to have run out of my thinner black paint making sure I got some nice clean lines here so again I want to 
give it some sort of center point because you can see a lot of this one. So I'm gonna just kind of do, and I know they wanna come from here, so I'm gonna kind of do a line maybe about a half of an inch to an inch away from the edge that's gonna um, represent this center part over here because we're seeing it at a different angle. So maybe something like this. And then I've got these weird little um, breaking points, so maybe I've got something like that. You can see how I'm just kind of sketching this out here. And maybe something like that, so that kind of represents that there. And that's going to give me great direction as to where to put those veins from coming out. So I've got this. And once I, once I reach this one, then the rest of them are going to kind of come out in you don't want them to all come down this direction. They're still got to come out naturally from that center. So maybe I've got one coming like that, maybe like this, something like that. And then I've got this one coming from here, from here. Maybe I've got another couple coming off of there. Then I'm going to do my... Um, my messy bumps around the sides. Um, I'm going to start them here and I'm going to travel all the way down to here. So again, these can be as messy, as tall as you want them. They don't have to line up with those veins. Oh, I might want to do one or two more in the center there. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see where my brush takes me. Something like that. Then I'm going to do my exterior outline. So again, I don't want to forget to do this one like I did that one. So I'm going to go really close to the edge, trying to not get my hand in the way. And I have a shaky hand. So when I do these skinny lines, you, sometimes you might see I rest my pinky or my palm on the side of my canvas. So that helps me to um, kind of stabilize my hand. And you, again, you don't have to leave the whole um, exterior showing just little hints of it here and there are gonna tell the viewer that you know definitely give them the information that this is the edge of the wing but maybe that little edge is being highlighted by the Sun somewhere else so you know just go with whatever works and if you if you paint over the edges and you want to add like a little highlighted edge to it later you can certainly do that and again i'm just kind of painting in these messy dots or the decorations around the edge the markings and then i've got to get these interior ones represented so these ones can travel you know maybe halfway down this uh this wing so again i'm just going to kind of make myself some messy dots within here and you can really have fun with these. They almost, re to me, kind of resemble like feathers. Um, I don't know why, maybe because they're just, uh, just kind of soft around the edges. And then you can just, you know, just try and make them different sizes. I think I definitely want something in through here. It looks too bare to me. And then let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your butterfly wings all nice and beautiful. You can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're using our small brush and we are painting the base coat for the body of our butterfly. You try saying that three times fast. <laughs> base coat for the butter, <laughs> base coat for the butterfly body, base coat for the butterfly body. <laughs> nope, I'm not gonna get this. Base coat for the butterfly body, base coat for the Base coat for the butterfly body. Base coat for the butterfly body. Base coat for the butterfly body. Yeah. So I'm going to be using a gray paint, which I'm going to pre-mix, and I'm going to use black and white. And I just am going to go for kind of like a medium to light gray. I don't know if you can, if it translates that well into the camera, but that's about the color I'm going for. And this body of this butterfly. It's got a really cute head, a really poofy body, and they have arms and legs like people, <laughs> kind of to me anyways. Um, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of make an oval first coming out of this section. 
I only want my oval to be, it's gonna start right at the top part of here. So I'm just gonna make myself a little curve so you can see where I'm gonna start. It's only gonna be about a half of an inch wide and it's gonna come down maybe about an inch and a half. It's not super big, so don't make yourself like a, I don't know, a big huge beetle for a body. So I'm gonna come down maybe about an inch and a half and I'm just gonna make myself like an oval and paint it in with gray paint. This is gonna just give us a nice base coat. We'll add details to it later. Um, so there's my, my body part. I'm gonna make a little head. So this head kind of is gonna go a little bit taller than here, but you're gonna start a little bit below the, the height and you're gonna go a little bit taller. And then it has like a, a longer face. <laughs> so it's gonna come down a little bit and then back up. So it kind of has this like cute little bump down here on the face and then I'm just gonna color it in gray. Now I'm gonna do its arms <laughs> or it's the arm that we're gonna see. So I'm gonna do that about mid body. And I, again, I'm just gonna kind of pull out like a little nub. We'll put the, the, the longer antenna, -y, not antenna, the longer leg part on later. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for its leg. I'm telling you, they really look like arms and legs if you look at it really close. So this one is gonna have like its leg coming out here. It actually has like a knee and stuff, but we'll get that translated when we do the, um, the little skinnier parts. And that's all I'm gonna do for this um, step. I am going to be, let's see, what are we gonna do for the next step? We're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your body started, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're making the white polka dotty spots in these black markings. I'm gonna use my small brush and I'm gonna use white paint and I am making messy, polka dots like these are. So I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna make myself a messy white polka dotty type marking throughout each one of these black humps that I made earlier. So it might take you a minute, but you can have fun while doing it. And you can imagine yourself just taking beautiful photographs of these cool butterflies I've been to a couple of butterfly, oh, what are they called, farms? I don't know if they're called farms. The place that they're, that they're in a building and there's lots of butterflies. I wish somebody could just magically whisper that into my ear right now. Conservatory. Ah, uh, butterfly places. Conservatory. Emporiums, no, butterfly farms. Conservatory. Anyways, it's really cool. I've never seen this kind of butterfly, but um, when you're sitting there and all of these butterflies just kind of float around you, they're just so delicate and dainty and beautiful because they come in so many different colors. I really would like to see this kind of butterfly because it is huge. And I've only seen small butterflies or normal size, like, like the size of my hand. But, you know, maybe someday I will be blessed enough to see one of these beautiful creatures. All right, sorry. So we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are using our medium brush and we are doing the first step to the detailed flowers. So the colors that I'm gonna use are red, white, and brown and I'm gonna kind of pre-mix myself a color so a little red a little white and a little brown it's almost gonna be like a dull pinky color and what I'm gonna use this for is the stems of these flowers because they they almost like if you look at them upside down they look like little trumpets they've got like a little tiny um, stem to them so I want to give the impression or the illusion that there are these little stem shooting out. So this is gonna be my one that's the most in focus, this one and this one. And I'll have a little out of focus area over here. So I've got my pre-mixed color and I'm just really gonna do these pieces kind of shooting up from within my 
main flower part. And I'm gonna go almost down to the bottom. Um, think of these like little pieces of grass or something coming out of here. And I'm gonna do it on this one more towards the top. Um, and again, we're just going for a, an illusion kind of effect, an impressionistic kind of effect. I'll do some over here as well. And then what I'm gonna do for um, the, the next thing on this first step is I'm gonna still use this same brush and I'm gonna be picking up red paint and I'm gonna do the first layer of the little petals. So these, from what I could tell, they're, they're, well, I know that they're called red pentas, but from what I could tell by looking at them, they have five petals. Um, I'm not sure if all of the varieties of pentas have five petals, but the ones that I was looking at do, but you don't always have to be looking at them straight on. You can look at them from the side, which maybe you would only see like three petals from the side. So because I'm just going to use red paint, it's going to be kind of um, probably a little dull on this step, but we're going to do another step to brighten it up. So this is just kind of getting them in place. So I have red paint and I'm just going to kind of make myself a couple that are going to be, you know, a, a little bit more prominent. Maybe this one I see from the side. I am using quite a bit of paint on my brush. So you'll, so it almost appears thicker than, um, the rest, but you can see it, it is kind of becoming visible and it'll be more visible later when we do another step to it. But maybe some of them you look at, you're looking at them from the side. You can see that I'm leaving the bottom area darker because there, there's um, gonna be some greenery that we put down at the bottom in a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna do some on here and then I'm gonna do a couple over here. And if you put some past your base red area, that um, first um, out of focus area that we did, if you put them more towards the top or in that black, they're gonna pop out more. Um, you'll be able to see them a little bit more. So I'm gonna do a couple along the edges that I really want you to be able to see them popping out. And then maybe some I'll put in that center, some maybe that you can see all five petals on. Um, and again, you don't have to make them all five petals. Maybe some of them are only two because we're just seeing a little piece of it from the side. And then I'm going to do just a couple over here. I, this one's, I almost want a little bit more out of focus. I really want my focus over there, but I do want something to be represented over here. So I might just do a couple of little dashes. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So you can wash and dry and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to be creating our in focus leaves. Um, so, or close to in focus. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are green, yellow, brown. If I need to, I'll use some black. And if I want to, I'll use some white. So it depends on how bright you want to make them. So again, this is, I want this to be my focal point. So I'm gonna just focus on using whatever light spots that I've already naturally created. I'm just gonna accentuate those and make them have more detail and definition on them. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of green and yellow on my brush, just so I can almost plan out what I want to do with them. So I see this mark right in through here. So I think I'm gonna use that and make myself maybe a nice kind of leaf that is just emerging from the darkness and it can be wider or thinner. Um, these, you know, these don't all have to be the, the correct leaf that belongs to this flower. These flowers can be wild. They can have other types of leaves around them. So if, you, if you're feeling, I want to do something different, go for it. Um, but the leaves that are um, for this particular type of flower are kind of l like long and pointy-esque. They, they're like a little round with a, with a point on the end. So, and of course they can roll over and be floppy and stuff like that. So just go with whatever you're seeing. So I am kind of seeing one right here. So I'm gonna 
Again, I'm just using yellow and white right, or excuse me, yellow and green right now just to kind of get my, my brain straight as to where I want each one of these to go. So I'm kind of seeing one in through here. So I think I'm gonna let that one happen. I'm gonna have a nice point in through there and then maybe it just kind of disappears. Maybe I've got one there. Maybe I've got one coming out over here. So again, I'm just kind of watching what I've already started um, and letting kind of form whatever is gonna form. Um, this one's gonna be a big one, I guess. Uh, let's see, and I don't really wanna go too far outside of my focal area. So maybe I've got a little one that's just poking its head here and here. Maybe that gets darker in through there. I like this in through here, but I'm not sure what I wanna do with it. Maybe, maybe we'll go with it like that. And then I want it to be kind of shadowed or darker inside and brighter on the edges of the leaves. So I'm gonna use, I still have green and yellow on my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown just to make sure that it almost like fades into the darkness. Um, so there's a, like a shadow on the underside of that particular leaf that I see or on the inside of it if I want it to be um, darker on the inside. And then I can take a little bit of yellow and white and green on my brush at the same time and add like little highlights to the edges of the leaves if I want to, or on an area that I want to look like it's bending, I can add a little bit. But the trick to this in this particular painting for me is less is more. I don't wanna overdo the details on these leaves because I don't want them to be the star of the show. I want my butterfly to be the star and the second star of the show is the little um, flowers. So I'm really not gonna do much. I just wanna give the hint that these in fact are you know the the leaves of the flowers um but i'm really not gonna do a whole he heck of a lot more maybe i've got you know a subtle one over here i mean if you see little edges that s are telling you yes i'm a f i'm a leaf over here then sure add a little accentuated mark to it um, I'm gonna add a little bit of black onto my brush because I want to, this almost looks too muddled in through here, so I'm adding black just to separate these leaves a little bit. Um, that'll help to bring them in focus too. I'm not really digging this right now because it looks a little bit too much and too muddled for me, so I'm just kind of adding another little layer on top of it just so it's a little bit softer. Before I know it, I might actually uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this area, but we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll put, ooh, there we go. We'll just put a couple more leaves in there. <laughs> just have fun with it and whatever happens, happens. We'll make this one a little bit bigger. There we go. And then let's see, I'm digging that. I'm seeing some, some leaves popping out. And again, I don't want it to go overboard. So I think I might, I might call it, oh, maybe this one goes like this. See, they just kind of, they just kind of build themselves. And then once I've got this step done, let's see, what am I gonna do for the next step? I am going to be using, hmm, I think I'm gonna use the, uh, mm, let's use the small brush for the next step. So once you've got your leaves all nice and realized here, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready after I finish this petal or the leaf and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our in-focus flowers. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm using my small brush. I am using red, yellow, white, and green. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do a second layer on my petals to make sure that they pop and are nice and bright. And then I'm gonna be doing centers for my flowers. And then I'm also gonna be doing these little greenery clusters that are down below, because at the bottom of these flowers, they have these tiny little leaves um, where they grow out of. So we're gonna put those at the bottom. So I'm gonna start with red, yellow, and white on my brush. And the reason why I'm gonna use yellow in my 
red and white combination is because I don't want it to go too pink on me. So the yellow will counteract that when you have red and white on your brush. And I'm really just doing another layer to my petals. So if you want a little bit of a highlight, use a little bit more white. I might um, do even more white in a second here because I know that the red really is translucent and see-through, so I want it to pop and I want you to be able to see some highlights in here, so that's why I'm doing a second coat on them. I want you to be able to see them in front of um, that background, so I am definitely making sure that they have um, enough paint on them so you can see them. And then once I've got them fully bright enough and I've got these little tiny highlights, what I can do is I'm gonna put yellow and white on my brush and just do a little tiny dot in the ones that look like they should have centers. Some of them you might not even see the centers, like if they're um, off to the side, you may not even see the centers. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do my other ones that I wanna have in focus. So I'm, again, I'm doing a second layer of red, yellow, and white. And if again, if you want it to pop even more, add a little bit more white to it and that's going to give you like these little beautiful highlights on those on those petals so depending on how in focus or subtle you want them to be you can certainly elevate that look by adding a touch more of the white to your brush and then of course you can add that whatever ones you feel have the scent you can see the center you can add that little bit of yellow and white in there let me see this is a little bit too bright compared to the rest. So maybe I either add a little bit more white on some of the other ones, maybe a couple of little highlights over here. And this is one of those kind of building processes. You just kind of take a look at it, put your head back and see if it's exactly as you want it. I don't want this one to be too in focus. So um, I'm not going to use a lot of white on this one and just maybe give the, you know, subtle details on that one. And then maybe I'm gonna have a little one here. All right, so uh, let's see. I am going to be using a small brush for the net. Oh wait, we've missed the green stuff. Hold on a second, washing and drying my brush. Green, yellow, and white. And these are these little tiny, almost like pieces of grass down at the bottom. So yellow, green, and white. And I have all three, all three colors on my brush at the same time but I'm just kind of flicking it up and every time I go to pick up some paint, maybe I pick up a different combination, like that time I picked up a little bit more yellow. And this is just this weird little cluster of short greenery that is at the bottom of these flowers where they grow out of. So that's why I wanna make sure that I represent it so it adds some authenticity to these particular flowers. And again, um, We'll use this brush for the next step if I don't forget to do something before that. <laughs> and then, um, so just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are doing the second, we're finishing the body, really. Not the legs, the full legs or the antennas, not the skinny parts, but we're finishing, it looks like to me, armor on the butterfly's body. So it's we're gonna be using black and white um, if and the small brush. And if you want to or need to, you can use a little bit of the gray as well. Um, I'm using the gray as the base color and I'll use um, the white as like little highlights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my black first. So I'm putting a little bit of black on my brush. And so, Think of this as there's a like a little black armor down the center of the arm and the center of the leg, and then there's little marks along the back of it, and then there's marks on the head. So I'm just gonna make little marks and you can just follow along. So I'm gonna do a little um, mark on the head. It's gonna take up about half the head. It's gonna be a curve like this and then I'm gonna just paint it in. I am, like I did for the wings, leaving a little bit of an edge 
of the light color so it doesn't get lost with my black background. If you have a lighter background, you're cool with that. Um, I am gonna put a highlight on the top of the head too as well. Um, so if I lose part of the edge, I can redo it. Um, and there's a little bit of a black part on what I'm assuming is the nose, which I do not know if butterflies have noses or not, but I'm gonna call this the nose. So there's a little black area in through here. There's maybe a little black stripe up here. I don't know if this is where the eye sits. I couldn't tell from the photos that I was looking at if they're, I'm sure it's got eyes, but you know, you can only see so much detail on the butterfly. And then there's little black markings on the back. There's, um, when I make these markings down the legs, uh, they're not firm lines because there's almost like these little armor pieces. <laughs> such a silly word I'm sure that's not what it is but um, so I'm gonna almost like just kind of make like uneven marks that kind of connect to each other I'm gonna do pretty solid here and then as I go down maybe he's got some on the belly and then maybe some on this leg something like that um, and then let's see what else white so now that I've got the black areas on there I'm gonna add, oh, you know what? Maybe I want a little bit more black in front of the front, maybe on that elbowy part. So now I'm gonna put some white on my brush. I washed and dried it. And I'm gonna put like a little highlight on the top of the head. So I have white on my brush like this. And then I'm gonna add like a little highlight onto this. And then I'm just adding little white highlights everywhere. So I've got a little white highlight on the back. And then maybe I've got some little pops of white going down in through here. I'm not covering up all of my black because I want this to look like um, these little pieces of whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's armor. It's just its body. I don't, you know, we can call it whatever we want to. We just have fun while painting. I think I want a little bit more black in through there. A little bit more black. And again, I'm kind of doing extra detail on the body. You don't have to, you do keep, just have fun. If yours ends up looking like a cool little beetle, great. If it ends up looking like a little alien, great. Just, this is all about just having fun and enjoying the process. Um, but now that I do have, oh, maybe we'll put a little bit of white on this little collar kind of area on his little neck and he missed his I lost his little front there all right so he looks cute um, so now I'm gonna use the same brush for the next step so once you've got some black and white all nice and dispersed throughout the body you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the antennas and really skinny legs <laughs> so I'm gonna be using black and white on my brush at the same time so I can have some dark spots and some light spots I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna I just turned twisted my brush in my paint before I'm doing it so it's not too wide of a line so these antennas they're gonna come back a little bit from the head and then they jut out at an angle and they curve a little bit at the edge of it. And they should be about a third of the length of this big wing here. So if you can take this wing and say maybe a third, a third, a third, that's about how long it should be. So you can kind of measure yourself if you want to. You could even put a little dot to tell you that's where you're headed. Um, so that way you don't overshoot your yourself and then what I'm going to do is I'm again I'm putting black and white on my brush and you can always make it lighter or darker um, once you got it on here but just getting it on there is kind of the the you know the main goal initially so I'm going to come back just a little bit oh I need a little more white so you can see it so back a little bit in through here my dot is here that I'm going for and I'm just going to kind of Go like this, and before I hit that dot, I will just kind of curve it just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much, just a teeny tiny bit. And I'm reloading my brush with black and white because I want two antennas. They're both gonna come out pretty similar in spot. I guess they would be one on either side of the head, but I don't think the head's very wide, so they're gonna come out pretty similar in a spot, maybe like this. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit different of an angle 
So maybe something like that and then just curve it a little bit at the end. I'm gonna put a teeny bit of white paint on my brush because I really want you to be able to see it. So I'm just gonna put a little tiny twinkle of a highlight on that antenna to make sure you guys can see it. Well, not just you, but who's ever looking at it. So I can see that, that's great. Now I'm gonna do my legs. So these are extensions of here. So this is in essence, I'm gonna call this the knee <laughs> and I'm gonna call this the elbow. So what I'm gonna do, you can use again, a combination of the black and the white. I think they are really just black, but you can certainly, since we have such a dark background, you can certainly use white as the as a accent kind of color. And so if this is my elbow, they it, it like kind of shoots out and then if this is my wrist, the next part is super long. <laughs> so it's like elbow to wrist is normal and then there's a really long, um, almost like extra long leg on the end of it. So here we go. I've got elbow to wrist and then really, really long and it can come out at a little angle, really, really long. And then, you know, it just, I don't know what it does at the end. It, maybe it has a little tiny foot or something at the end. Um, and then you can have the other one come out at a slightly different angle if you wanna have two. If not, who's to know that you can see, that you couldn't see the other one or you could see the other one. So I'm just gonna make it pretty close to this one. So if, you know, if it doesn't go right, that's okay. And maybe this one comes out a little bit that way. And you can do it, if you, if it, if you want it lighter or darker, you can certainly add a little bit of black to it or a little bit of white to it to disguise it or enhance it. So that's all I'm gonna do for the arms. Now I'm gonna put legs. So if this is the knee, it's kind of the same thing. So from knee to ankle is kind of normal length, but then ankle to the foot is super, super long. <laughs> so if this is my knee, maybe I come, oh, let me put a little bit more white on here so you can see it. So if this is the knee, maybe I come out like, oh, you still can't see it. So add a little bit more white here. Knee, come out like that to my, what would be the ankle. And now I can have a really long, I don't even know where this is gonna go. We're just gonna go past the flower, really long. And then they have this like, like hooky thing where the, where the end of it goes. <laughs> I don't know my butterfly anatomy very well. <laughs> so that's one. And then I'm gonna do my second one kind of behind it maybe like that. And maybe this one comes out, you know, on the other side of it. I'm gonna use a little bit more black. And I, I want it to look kind of similar to that one. So maybe this one comes like this and then just kind of hooks around like that. That's all I'm gonna do. I don't go too in detail with them because I don't want to screw it up too much. <laughs> so once you've got them in an acceptable position, you're all set. Uh, and then we have one tiny little step left to do for the next step and it's going to be with the small brush. So once you've got your legs and antennas on, you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to our final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom left. I kind of want my signature to be kind of subtle on this one to not take away from my beautiful butterfly. I'm gonna be using black paint. I'm gonna sign mine with my initials, but you could sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful butterfly and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.